Ayo manyare dumar ga kan beria gue ya bina junu ga kile war ruam ni me Ayo de gali la kuma kuro de jangun magang de jor de bakal de tangi je Ladies and gentlemen, this is a guinea one. Nyarfu. People get guinea worm disease when they drink water from stagnant ponds that have been contaminated by other people who have entered the water supply. Guinea worm is a debilitating disease. It's caused by a large worm growing inside a human body that penetrates the skin with a terrible sore. These worms are about a meter long, two to three feet uh, long. <laughs> they leaves a young child, for instance, with the same characteristics as polio, crippled for life. <laughs> How many of you have ever had uh, guinea worms? The people who suffered from guinea worm lived in the most remote, isolated, poorest communities in the world. It didn't seem to have any solution, and so it was almost an insurmountable problem. That's why we decided to try to solve it. We eventually visited 23,600 villages in 20 different countries, three countries in Asia, 17 countries across the sub-Saharan region of Africa. The most important thing is that we need to make sure that the system is working and we need to make a total overhaul. Don't you people think that we all have a responsibility to the water we drink? to make sure that the water we drink is clean. See that? Uh, I understand that the children, maybe they don't listen. Yeah, they don't listen. But our, our job as parents is to teach our children. We have eliminated 99.9% .9 and we're working on that last few hundred cases in just a few countries. This will be the second disease in the history of the world it's ever been completely eradicated from the face of the earth. If you leave one worm, there's the potential for the entire thing to come back, to come back. I'm absolutely confident that guinea worm will be uh, eradicated. The only question is how soon. Good evening. I'm John Hardman, the President and CEO of the Carter Center, and I am pleased to welcome you tonight, our very special guest, honored guest, and partners. For those of you who are here in the auditorium with us, as well as all of you listening by live webcast, the video that you've just seen 
is a trailer for a new independent documentary on the campaign to eradicate guinea worm, and the title is Foul Water, Fiery Serpent. So we look forward to showing that to you soon. The film is a vivid reminder of this dreadful disease, guinea worm. And all of us know guinea worm as the fiery serpent, but many of us see this as hope and achievement because we know that with support from individuals like you, we have seen the accomplishments of people living in the poorest parts of the world improve their lives if just given a little bit of encouragement and the tools to enable them to do that. Working with international organizations, with many agencies, and the Federal Ministry of Health in endemic countries, the Carter Center has led the campaign since 1986 to wipe out guinea worm disease from the world. As you saw on the trailer, originally found in 20 countries in Africa and Asia, more than 99% of the disease has been eliminated. Tonight, we are here to honor the two most recent countries to win the battle against this disease, Nigeria and Niger. We will hear messages of congratulations from people inspired by this campaign's success, and we will recognize the recipients of the Jimmy and Rosalind Cardo Award for Guinea Worm Eradication, who have made an outstanding contribution to this campaign. For President Jimmy Carter, the goal of eradicating guinea worm disease has been a very special mission for more than two and a half decades. And his determination and his access to leaders throughout the world has brought this disease to the brink of, dis of extinction today. So join me in welcoming President Carter. Thank you very much. Good evening. Good evening. That's better. Okay, I just want to make sure everybody's awake, at least at the beginning of my talk, which is going to be brief. Well, I'm here to um, point out what has happened uh, in a very brief way and to illustrate the importance of it. I think tonight, when we celebrate the end of guinea worm in these two countries and approaching the end of guinea worm throughout the world, it's a historic occasion, not just for those who have been afflicted with guinea worm in the past and now free of the disease, but also the countries that have, have succeeded in a great achievement and can be legitimately proud as these two represented on the stage are. The Carter Center will also be benefited, but I think the entire world health system will be benefited by what's happened with guinea worm. Because the last time any disease was eradicated from the face of the earth was smallpox in 1979 when I happened to be President of the United States. I had nothing to do with it because of CDC and others did the work, including Don Hopkins on the stage with me. But I think it does two things. It proves, first of all, that it's possible to address a hopeless case like guinea worm was and succeed. And the second thing is, uh, it shows that the people who are afflicted are the ones that have the most challenge ahead of them and also the most credit when a success is reached. I'm going to describe two events that happened, one in Nigeria and one in Niger, to me. The first one is in Nigeria, and it illustrates a mistake that people make in this process. Uh, Rosa and I went to Nigeria to visit the first time a remote village that had guinea worm. And at that time, there was a kind of a oppressive dictator in command of the Nigerian government. And he didn't want to go with us, but he wanted his wife to go. I'm ordinarily very punctual. And the next morning when his wife decided to go, our motorcade was held up about an hour and a half, which drove me crazy. And the reason it held up that long is she had about 50 automobiles in the motorcade to go with her. And they had turned out school. And all the kids between about 50 miles from 
from the capital to go to this village had been turned out and there were school kids all along both sides of the road. And one of the most memorable signs I've ever heard in my, seen in my life was held by the little children. It said, watch out, guinea worm, here comes Jimmy Carter. <laughs> well, that illustrates a mistake made because I'm not the one that deserves any credit. If there is any credit, the rest of them are on the stage behind me, Don Hopkins and his staff, and also, of course, the people in the countries that were successful. The other one happened in Niger. And we kind of plowed new ground, you might say, to use a farmer's expression, in the eradication program. The problem was that we had 23,700 villages or so that we found guinea worm in, and these are the most remote, isolated villages on earth. They're the ones that don't have any running water at all, no nearby, no streams nearby, even a small branch, and they don't have any deep wells. So the only place they can get water is from a rain pond that fills up in the rainy season, and then they dip water out of it the rest of the year, and the water gets stagnant, and that's where the guinea worms uh, eggs grow, and when the people drink a drink, they get guinea worm that comes out 12 months later. So how do you educate people that speak different languages? We went to a little village in Ghana, and there were uh, 500 people there, and five miles away was another village. They spoke completely different language, and it was quite different from English in Ghana or, or, or French in other countries like Niger. So what do you do? You had to educate people by using drawings, cartoons. So Don Hopkins and others, and the local people especially, designed a way to teach people when they didn't speak the central language, even French, and they couldn't read and write because only 3% of the male inhabitants, the men, were literate. Most of the women had not been given a chance to go to school. How do you teach people when they can't read, write, don't have television, and that language by radio doesn't exist? So we developed a system for educating with drawings, cartoons. And we would have very simple cartoons on, we would have two women, one over here and one over here. This woman would be dipping up a bucket of water out of a pond. This one would be dipping up a bucket of water. This woman over here, next cap, she would be pouring her water through a filter cloth that we gave her. This one didn't. And then the next drawing would be the two women drinking water. And what do you think? This one over here would not have guinea worms. This woman over here would have guinea worms coming out of her leg. So that was the way we taught. And so we had some Peace Corps volunteers in Niger, in the northern part of Niger. About half the Peace Corps was working for us. And the two girls were there, two young women from America, and they wanted to do the same thing. So they drew pictures of two women standing in a pond, dipping up water, and doing what I just described. But when they got back to the village, all the villagers got upset when they saw the drawings. They said, we'd rather have guinea worm than no feet. <laughs> because they couldn't see feet in the picture. So you see, we've had some difficulties that we've overcome, and now we're approaching a point where we can have nothing but smiles on our faces and congratulations for each other. Well, I've already mentioned very briefly who is, who is a res responsible for the success. I would say ministers of health, yes. Heroes like General Gowan, yes. Don Hopkins, yes. Ernesto, yes. The people at the Carter Center, yes. UNICEF, yes. UNDP, yes. WHO, yes. But the main ones that need to be congratulated are the villagers themselves, who, <laughs> who, listen, who listen to our presentations. And quite often, it was very difficult for them to accept the message that Don Hopkins gave them, that the guinea worm disease from which you suffer and you have suffered for a 1,000 years comes out of your pond. Because for most of those villagers, the pond was sacred. It was their only source of water. If the pond hadn't been there, the village wouldn't have been there. Their ancestors wouldn't have lived. And for us to blame the disease on their sacred pond was not easy to accept. And what Don Hopkins would do, and Ernesto and others would say, look, the water, the pond is sacred, yes. It's pure, yes but this little animal has got into your pond that causes a disease, and we need to, your help to get it out or to keep the water from going in your mouth. So you see how simple the procedure was. But then we would leave, and the village chief and others, the leaders and, and a lot of women volunteers would make sure that nobody drank the water, 
out of the pond without a filter cloth or with a bait to kill the guinea worm in the water, and that nobody would go out in the pond when the worm was coming out of their legs or whatever, or feet, and laying new eggs. So the villagers were the ones that were the heroes. And they're the ones that we're not here tonight, except maybe in very rare cases. But we want to pay tribute to them, as well as the speakers that will follow me on this stage. I'm just grateful to have played a small part in what is going to be a tremendous success for the world, but it's already a success in the two countries here tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm Dr. Don Hopkins, Vice President for Health Programs here at the Carter Center. And it is my distinct pleasure also to welcome everyone to this long-awaited ceremony to celebrate the end of guinea worm disease in two more countries. We are honored to welcome Niger and Nigeria into the fold of guinea worm countries. This Carter Center ceremony to mark the interruption of guinea worm transmission by a country for 12 consecutive months was inaugurated in this auditorium in July 2000 when we honored the first seven formerly endemic countries. The second and third ceremonies were held in Atlanta in 2006 and in Abuja, Nigeria in 2008. We recognize this interim milestone of at least one year with no indigenous cases as presumptive interruption of transmission and as the first step towards becoming officially certified as a guinea worm free country by the World Health Organization. With tonight's awards, we will have honored 17 formerly endemic countries. Only Ghana, Mali, and Sudan remain to be honored in a fifth and final ceremony, the timing of which will depend on how effectively they pursue their remaining guinea worms. These Carter Center Awards and the statue which we will see at the reception were designed by the artist Kim Griffin. Kim, if you're here, would you please stand? Of Panama City, Florida. Thank you. <laughs> the awards were funded by former chairman of the Carter Center Board of Trustees, Mr. John Moores. Mr. Gary Stryker of Cielo Productions and his team produced the new Guinea Worm documentary, Foul Water Fiery Serpent, that is the subject of the trailer you just saw. Tonight, we shall also honor two guinea worm warriors with the Jimmy and Rosen Carter Award for guinea worm eradication. President and Mrs. Carter established this award on the occasion of the first program review for the guinea worm eradication programs of Ghana and Nigeria, which was also held here at the Carter Center in 1991. We have many honored guests and partners with us this evening. I'd like to ask the following persons to stand and be recognized and ask the rest of the audience to please hold your applause to the end. Former and current national program coordinators of guinea worm eradication programs are in the audience. Please stand. I'd like to ask delegations from our major partners, the World Health Organization, Drs. Dirk Engels, Gautam Biswas, Diodoni Sankara, Adiele Onyeze, and Aluseni Maiga, UNICEF, Mr. Michael Forson, CDC, Dr. Stephen Blount, Mark Eberhardt, and Sharon Roy. We also have ambassadors of the endemic and formerly endemic countries, including the Honorable Counselor, Mr. Bubakar Musa Rila of Niger, the Honorable Minister, Mr. Patrick Onadipe of Nigeria, His Excellency Cyril Segbe Oguin of Benin, His Excellency Paramanga Ernest Yonli and Attaché Mr. Karim Kabore of Burkina Faso, Her Excellency Mira Shankar and husband Mr. Ajay Shankar of India, His Excellency Mohammed Lamina El Hassan of Mar Mauritania, plus the Honorable Nigerian Federal Minister of Health, Professor Onyebuche Chukwu, his technical advisor, Ms. Genevieve Indukwu, Chief Consultant Epidemiologist, Dr. Henry Akpan, Professor at Etokombo Lucas of Nigeria, who is also a member of our International Task Force for Disease Eradication, 
and the Honorable Minister, Mr. Baba Garba, who's Acting Consul General of Nigeria here in Atlanta. We welcome also Mayor Kasim Reed of Atlanta, who is also here attending. The Carter Center is grateful to the many partners who have made this eradication campaign possible since the very beginning of our efforts in 1986, several of whom are also represented here tonight. And again, I ask you to please hold your applause to the end. The United Kingdom's Department for International Development has been a tremendous partner and is represented tonight by British Consul General Annabelle Malins. Consul General Stephen Beriton is representing the Canadian International Development Agency, another key donor to the program. The Saudi Fund for Development is represented by Hassan Atlatas, Hashim Atlatas, Saud Abdulaziz Al Fantouk, and Ibrahim Mohammed Al Suger. Her Excellency Ambassador Hunayna Al Mugheri is representing the Sultanate of Oman. Neville McDougall and Jessica Rockwood are attending on behalf of the BASF Corporation, which donates a bait larvicide to the program. <laughs> Vestigard Franson, a donor of filter cloths and pipe filters, is represented by Torben Vestigard Franson and, and colleague Paul Chen. Global Aviation Holdings is represented by Robert Beans and Stephen Forsyth. In addition, we have several friends of the Guinea Worm Eradication Program, including the McConnell family, Van, Wilma, Pat, and Kate. Also here are individual donors, other individual donors who are a subset of the thousands who have contributed to this campaign through the Carter Center. Finally, we thank the staff of the Carter Center itself. Know all please that we are deeply grateful to each of you for your commitment to stopping transmission of this terrible disease. Other major donors who have contributed significantly to our success, including our largest single donor, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and the E.I. DuPont Corporation, are listed in your program. Our gratitude extends further to our implementing partners, including the Ministries of Health in Endemic Countries, UNICEF, CDC, the World Bank, and the World Health Organization. In addition to the notable people you see on stage here, we also have up here two other honored guests who are supposed to be here. <laughs> that uh, the guinea worm that was removed from the last guinea worm patient in Nigeria and also the worm from the last, guinea worm, last Nigerian patient, for the next to last guinea worm patient. One of these two historic worms will remain here at the Carter Center. The other will be returned to Atlanta. Both will remind future generations of this eradication campaign and of the suffering it will have ended. We now pause to consider the rapidly dwindling number of living relatives of these two dead guinea worms. <laughs> there is nothing as frustrating as seeing, as you have just seen, a small child with a meter-long worm coming out of her foot because we know that this disease is entirely preventable. Our weapons are simple but effective. Straining drinking water through a cloth filter, applying a bait to water sources, and educating people to avoid entering sources of drinking water when a worm is emerging from their body. Providing clean water from a borehole well is the ideal intervention, but it is also the most expensive, slowest, and potentially subject to political diversion. This disease is being eradicated without a curative medicine or a vaccine, and in the process, we're helping some of the world's most forgotten people to help themselves. In 1986, there were an estimated 3.5 million cases of guinea worm disease in the world. Since then, the guinea worm map has shrunk from 20 countries to four, and more than 99% of the disease has been wiped out, leaving about 1,800 cases reported in 2010. Last year, Sudan reported 1,698 cases. Mali reported 47 cases, Ethiopia 21 cases, Ghana 8 cases. Chad, which had reported no cases for the past decade, reported an outbreak of 10 cases last year. Ghana, which reported nearly 180,000 cases in 1989, has reported no cases since May 2010 and has probably stopped transmission already. So the timing of our next ceremony now really depends on Mali and Southern Sudan. 
We shall not ask Chad and Ethiopia to return their awards in light of the latest outbreaks there, but we won't award them a second time either. <laughs> Today, most of our attention is focused on Southern Sudan, where 94% of all cases in 2010 were reported. The Southern Sudan Guinea Worm Eradication Program has already reduced its cases by over 90% since that program was organized in 2006 after the Civil War ended. With this major achievement and last month's peaceful referendum on independence, South Sudan is poised to use guinea worm eradication as an engine for development, improving agricultural productivity and school attendance, as well as health, as that new country aims to interrupt transmission by 2012. This is remarkable progress. But considering the many objections and resistance we have faced over the years, even with President and Mrs. Carter's steadfast support, it is my considered opinion that without their support, this global Guinea worm eradication program may not have prevailed at all, despite the now obvious logic of this campaign. I am still haunted by the memory of visiting an, an African village a few years ago where I was surrounded by dozens of young children who remained astonishingly quiet as I did an interview. I often think of the unique capabilities that the world loses when such children are hindered by a disease or can't attend school. One whose talent was fortunately not lost is Jelani Aliyu, the fifth of seven children who studied architecture in Nigeria and automobile design in Detroit. At the 2007 North American International Auto Show in New York, he was acclaimed by General Motors as the lead designer of the Chevy Volt concept car. Sheikh, Sheikh, Sheikh Modibo Diara was born in a small town in Mali and graduated from Bamako Technical School before studying in Paris and at Howard University in Washington, DC. He became an interplanetary navigator with NASA where he guided space probes to their destinations, Magellan to Venus, Ulysses to the Sun, Galileo to Jupiter, and Mars Observer and Mars Pathfinder with their robotic rovers to the rail to the red planet. It is in the world's interest to do more. This campaign is not just about reducing cases of a disease to zero. It is about improving lives including indirectly our own. A few months after CDC Director Bill Fagy and I began this initiative at CDC in 1980, Dr. Ernesto Ruiz Tibbin in CDC's Division of Parasitic Diseases was assigned to join the project and he has been at it ever since. He became the Director of Carter Center's Guinea Worm Eradication Program in 1998. Dr. Ruiz came to the Carter Center in 1992 after 27 years at CDC. He holds a master's degree from the University of Puerto Rico and a doctorate from the University of Texas School of Public Health at Houston. Please join me in welcoming my longtime friend and fellow guinea worm warrior, Dr. Ernesto Ruiz. Thank you very much, Don. Uh, my job here tonight is to present uh, two summaries, short summaries of each one of the countries. So we'll start with Niger. In 1991, the government of Niger established its National Guinea Worm Eradication Program. And during October, November, that same year, the program with assistance from UNICEF, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the Carter Center and the World Health Organization conducted a nationwide village by village search for cases of Guinea Worm disease, detecting 32,000 829 cases in 1,687 villages. The last indigenous case of guinea worm disease was detected and contained in the village of Tintihun in Tilaberi district of Tilaberi region in October 2008. And in your folders, there are a couple of maps showing exactly where this village is. The Carter Center, UNICEF, and WHO assisted in Niger's guinea worm program throughout its campaign with the U.S. Peace Corps assisting in implementation. Additional support was provided by the government of Japan, the Danish assistant agency, Danida, Health and Development International, Precision Fabrics, EI DuPont de Nemours and Company, 
BASF Corporation, uh, Westergaard France, and, and many others. The successive national Guinea worm program coordinators were Mr. Sali Sukane, Mr. Sadi Musa, and Mr. Haru Umaru, all of whom will receive certificates of recognition for their roles in the success of this national eradication effort. We also thank every village volunteer and all Guinea worm program staff, including each of the 21 Carter Center technical advisors and three resident technical advisors who assisted this program since 1991, and all of whom made the eradication of guinea worm disease from Niger possible. I request all of you technical advisors, resident technical advisors, and national program coordinators that assist in Niger and are present here tonight to please stand and be recognized, including you, Haru. Please stand. It is now my pleasure to invite the Honorable Council, Counselor of Niger's Embassy in the USA, Mr. Bubakar Musa Rila, to make a few remarks. Mr. Rila, the floor is. Thank you, sir. I, I would like to speak in French if it would please you. In the name of the government of the Republic of Niger, I would like to deeply thank President Carter, Dr. Hopkins, Dr. Ruiz Tiben, and the Carter Center for this prestigious work for my country. If you take care of your pot, your kitchen will do well. And this guinea worm was under surveillance in my country for, many, for, many, for a very long time, Mr. President, honorable guests. As we accept this plaque, which is witness to the eradication of, the, of guinea worm in our country. Thanks to the work of the village volunteers, all of the, the 21 uh, technical advisors, all the, tech, the uh, personnel from the Carter Center, I'd like to thank uh, Mrs. Leslie Chase, Dr. James, Mr. Sali Sukane, who gave their assistance to this program starting in 1991. Please be reassured, Mr. President, that it will be a great pleasure for the Nigerian people to live a future without this fiery serpent. I thank you so much. Mr. Councilor. And now to Nigeria. With assistance from the Carter Center, UNICEF, WHO, CDC, Nigeria launched its National Guinea Worm Eradication Program in 1987. A nationwide village-by-village -village search for cases conducted during August 1988 to February 1989 detected 653,492 cases of the disease in 5,872 villages, the highest number of cases ever reported from any of the endemic countries. And this was the first nationwide search for cases of guinea worm disease in Africa. The last indigenous case of guinea worm disease was detected and contained in the village of Essa and Kubor in Enugu East local government area of Enugu State on November 11, 2008. The Carter Center, WHO, CDC, and UNICEF were the major external supporters of the government of Nigeria's eradication program throughout the campaign with assistance from the U.S. Peace Corps. Additional support was provided by the government of Japan, the government of Nigeria, 
Kate and Ren, AG Leventis Foundation, Chevron Corporation, Precision Fabrics, EI DuPont de Nemours and Company, BASF Corporation, Westergaard Francis, and many others. Dr. Lola Sadik, Dr. Kamurodin Oyodu, deceased, and Ms. Mrs. Ifioma Anakbogu, the successive national coordinators, will receive certificates of recognition for their key roles in the Nigeria and Guinea Worm program. We also thank every village volunteer and all Guinea Worm program staff, including the 26 Carter Center technical advisors that served in Nigeria during the campaign, our five resident technical advisors, and nine Carter Center sonal coordinators who also assisted the program since 1987, and General Dr. Jakubu Gowon, former head of state of Nigeria, all of whom made the eradication of Guinea worm disease. I now request General Gowon, the resident technical advisors, technical advisors, sonal consultants, and any others that assist in Nigeria to please stand and be recognized. General Gowon. Thank you very much. It is now my distinct privilege to invite the Honorable Minister, Federal Minister of Health, Professor on Onyebuchi Chukwu, to make a few remarks. Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of President Goodluck Jonathan and the people of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, I thank you, President Carter, Dr. Hopkins, John Hartman, and Dr. Ruiz Stevens, and indeed the entire Carter Center for this wonderful award and recognition for hard work. While it is true that Nigeria accepts this award with pride, it is equally true that my main task this evening is to convey my country's appreciation to President Jimmy Carter and his amiable wife, Mrs. Rosalind Carter, as well as the Carter Center for their endearing and enduring partnership with Nigeria, the result of which we are all celebrating tonight. The award is a befitting tribute to all those who collaborated on the Nigeria Guinea Worm Eradication Program. Um, the Carter Center, Dr. General Yakubu Gowan, and the Yakubu Gowan Center, and of course, Mrs. Victoria Gowan, uh, because uh, she made it possible for him to, uh, to do what he did. <laughs> Your Excellency General Gowan, uh, in 1970, there was no victor and no vanquished. It is this friend this time around, because in the war with Guinea Worm, you obviously one of the victors, and Guinea Worm remains the vanquished. The governments of Japan and Norway uh, lent their hands, UNICEF, WHO World Bank, the UNDP, and of course the Nigerian National Certification Committee members and the other Nigerian health workers, some of them who are here. And I want just to acknowledge the efforts of uh, Professor Adetokumbo Lucas. I want to acknowledge the efforts of Professor Luke Edungbola, Dr. Lola Sadik, Professor Ookale, Professor Eka Braide, Professor Ebio Yediron, Dr. Sonia Anabemiro, whom many of us begin to forget, but he was the one who actually taught the world about the intermediate stage of this uh, dreaded disease way back in the 60s. Of course, our beloved Ifoma Anagbogu and uh, some of her own predecessors whom will be mentioned this evening, including um, Dr. Kamorudin Ojodu, as well as others who are here, uh, someone like Dr. Emmanuel Miri, and of course several others, and the most important, the endemic communities themselves. The result of this partnership indicates that when we all work purposely as a team and with the active participation of the communities, we achieve beyond our individual potentials. This is what has given you and us the courage and determination to expand into efforts to fight 
river blindness, schistosomiasis, lymphatic filariasis, and malaria. What was achieved with the fight against Guinea worm in Nigeria is nothing short of a miracle from carrying half of the global Guinea worm burden in 1988. Nigeria today carries none. Certainly, together we can do it again with other diseases. Our communities now believe and know we can because you led them to see what their own ingenuity, commitment, and hard work could achieve. I agree completely with them. Let's get on with it. Thank you very much. I'd now like to introduce a major partner of our campaign, former Nigerian Head of State, Dr. General Yakubu Gowan, who will say a few words about how he has seen the Guinea Worm Eradication Program affect communities. Since 1998, General Gowan has made 82 trips to visit 135 endemic communities in Nigeria to help promote eradication. In 2006, in recognition of his tireless support of the campaign, he was recognized with the Jimmy and Rosen Carter Award for Guinea Worm Eradication. General Gowan. Mr. President Jimmy Carter and Mrs. Uh, Rosalind Carter, your Excellencies, Honorable Ministers, Dr. and Mrs. John Hartman, collaborating partners, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. And I must mention the ladies and gentlemen of the press because if I mean, of the great work that they've been doing to publicize uh, the fight against Guinea and we thank you for your partnership. Greetings to you all. I wish to most sincerely thank President uh, Carter and Mrs. Rosalind Carter and the Carter Center for inviting me and my wife uh, to the 15th Guinea Worm Eradication Program Man Managers Meeting and this special award ceremony in favor of Nigeria and its northern neighbor, Niger, for successfully interrupting Guinea worm diseases transmission. As a partner in the Nigerian eradication effort, I'm humbled by the award and honored to represent the thousands of former Guinea worm disease victims to whom this award belongs. I'm also aware that this award serves to remind all of us to remain alert until certification and beyond. When President Carter asked and challenged me to join him uh, to do battle against uh, Guinea worm in Nigeria in 1998, little did I know and imagine the impact it would have on me personally and the thousands of people and hundreds of communities throughout the length and breadth of Nigeria. I had traveled and visited with our collaborating partners uh, to, remove, uh, to remote areas, uh, rural areas and communities of Nigeria and saw the impoverishment caused by, this, uh, by the scourge of the disease. We drew the attention of the relevant authorities at all levels of government to support the communities and partner to do battle against the disease. Through the untiring effort of this partnership of which the Carter Center has been in the forefront 
we are today doing honor to two countries that may have overcome this scourge. In the recent past, what we see in the same previous uh, uh, ravaged uh, communities are huge developmental strides and smiles. We are eternally grateful uh, to you, Mr. President, and Almighty God for this uh, change. We fervently look forward to certification of the two countries as Guinea warm, free, and pray that both countries move to establish and maintain the necessary surveillance system that meet the requirements. We thank you. God bless you all. Thank you, General Gawan. We are now going to confer two Jimmy and Rosalind Carter Awards for Guinea worm eradication. And at this point, I'd like to invite Mrs. Carter to please come to the stage. As you've heard, these awards were established by President and Mrs. Carter in 1991 to honor individuals who made exceptional contributions to the battle against Guinea worm disease. Our first awardee this evening is Mr. Haru, Mr. Omaru Haru, National Program Coordinator, Niger Guinea Worm Eradication Program, in recognition of his dedication, of his dedicated and effective leadership since 2004 and participation since 1991 in the campaign to eradicate Guinea worm disease or dracunculiasis from Niger. some remarks and then we'll uh, mm -hmm. make your remarks. Okay, thank you. This is the correct one. Our second award is presented to Mrs. Ifyoma Anagbogu, National Program Coordinator, Nigeria Guinea Worm Eradication Program, in recognition of her dedicated and effective leadership since 2007 and participation since 1988 when she started out as a secretary in the office in the campaign to eradicate guinea worm disease, trachonculiasis, from Nigeria. Well, this concludes tonight's ceremony and webcast. It is really touching when you see so many dedicated people working on getting rid of a disease, the second disease, to be eliminated and eradicated from the world. And on behalf of all of us at the Carter Center and our honorees tonight, I want to thank you for being here, those of you who are in our audience, as well as those of you who are listening in by webcast. The success of the Guinea Worm Campaign is due to the fact that you have been partners with us, and we very much appreciate that. We hope you will continue to follow 
the results of the campaign at our website, cartercenter.org. And you can also tune in to the Carter Center work on Facebook and Twitter. And I would like to invite all of you who are here, unfortunately those of you who are listening in by webcast or cannot join us for the reception, but all of you who are here, we hope that you will join us for a reception in the lobby of the Carter Presidential Library and Museum. We have a number of volunteers and staff in the hall to direct you over to the museum. And if you have one of the listening devices, I hope you will return it to one of the baskets uh, out in the hall as you leave. Thank you very much for being here and have a good evening. <laughs>